Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back to another episode of the Mr. Clutch Sportscast. I apologize for the one-day delay of buy or sell, National League edition. Um, remember, these are not predictions. They are in a way, but they're not really. They're not predicting who's going to win the division or different rounds of the playoffs or anything like that. That will come likely on Saturday. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. This is a game about who will be buyers or sellers at the trade deadline on July 31st, roughly. So since we're starting in the National League, now that I've had a chance to look over, uh, let's start in the East. So, big thing here, there are no automatic buyers. Nobody has proven themselves to be dominant. I'd say, well, actually there are automatic buyers, but it's not because they're dominant. It's because they're high in the rankings in terms of like division rankings. Um, and I don't see them being threatened. Yeah. So... Automatic sellers, I'm going to go Miami and Washington. Washington's tough because they had a sneaky good offseason headlined by the signing of Patrick Corbin. Um, but that team has not been what they expected it to be. They went through a bad week, week and a half stretch um, about two weeks ago, two or maybe three weeks ago. I don't see them overcoming that and getting into a spot where they can compete. This division is pretty tight. Even Miami theoretically has a shot, even though they suck. So they, you know, due to that, they don't have a shot. But I just don't see Washington as being able to compete with that stretch that they had. And Miami, come on. Miami in 2018 or 2019? No. No. Uh, automatic buyers. Philadelphia and Atlanta. Um, Austin Riley has come up huge for the Braves, providing them with some wins lately. Uh, yeah. The pitching is turning around for Fulton Evich and Tehran, I believe. Pretty sure. Um... Bullpen seems to be pretty good. You know, seems to be pretty solid. Uh, Mike Soroka, starting pitcher for the Braves, has been phenomenal this year. He's really helped them stay in this race. For the Phillies, they're an interesting case. Um, they just lost Andrew McCutcheon to an ACL injury, but they just acquired outfielder Jay Bruce from the Mariners in a trade. And Bryce Harper isn't doing as well as he's supposed to, but he comes up with clutch hits all the time. So they're a tough case to crack. Um, overall, I still see the Phillies as buyers. You know, just because they played well enough, their starting pitching is probably best in the division. I, yeah. I mean, their, pull, their bullpen is okay. Pretty good, actually. They got David Robertson from the Yankees. The NL East is definitely competitive, but not in the way that anybody expected, I don't think. Now, my toss-up is the New York Mets, and I'm going to have to say they're going to sell because up until a couple weeks ago, when they versed my hometown team, the Detroit Tigers, um, their season was in jeopardy. They started out hot, then they went on a really bad stretch, and now they're playing right about 500. They're at 28 and 31. Um, 
that's I don't <laughs> yeah which is a shame because they made that big deal with the Mariners to get Edwin Diaz their new closer and Robinson Cano who has traditionally been a really good hitter unfortunately I think just recently he went on the injured list so there's that the starting pitching was horrendous the first month, um, possibly a month and a half. They're starting to turn that around. The defense has been sloppy. I mean, the Mets are not where they want to be right now. So for that reason, or rather those reasons, I have them as sellers. But like I say, this division is so tightly wound that they could all be buyers. Who knows? Stranger things have happened, I suppose. All right, that was the National League East. Oh, before I forget, again, uh, potential needs for the Phillies and Braves. Braves, I would say bullpen. Um, you know, Craig Kimbrell still sitting out on the market. That might be a good arm to throw in there. Possible reunion there. That's, you know, it's not out of the cards yet. Um, I'd say you're pretty well set if you're the Braves for offense and position players so bullpen and starting pitching in that order uh, for the Phillies if you're the Phillies I'd say you do need a bat an impact bat somebody who can you know who can do some damage at the plate. Not necessarily a slugger, but you know, somebody who who can handle his own and drive in some runs and come up with those clutch hits. Uh, possibly if you wanted a little bit of depth in your starting rotation, that's a route to go too. But I would definitely say a bat. Now let's move. To the National League Central. Um, this division is even more tightly wound than the National League East. There are only six and a half games between first and last place. However, in my mind, this is a little bit more clear, and also not, but it's primarily more clear. Automatic buyers, no, sorry, automatic sellers first. Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. Why? Because Cincinnati is still Cincinnati. I don't care if they have Nick Senzel. I don't care if they're 27 and 32 and only six games out of six and a half games out of first place. I don't care that they have a plus 36 run differential. I'm looking at these raw stats right now. Um, they're still Cincinnati. I don't. I would not trust them to win. I would not trust them to be in a position where they would feel the need to go out and get a player to help them with a playoff push, because I don't see them making the playoffs. Um, but yeah, that's just me. The Pirates, not enough of everything, I think, is what's causing them to play right about 500. Um, obviously not enough wins. There's still five. They're only five games back of first place, but they have the worst run differential in their division. They have the only negative run differential in the division. Negative 68. So when they lose, they lose bad. And when they win, they don't win by very much. So that tells me their starting pitching is not consistent enough or their bullpen can't hold games for long enough, or their bats aren't coming alive at the right times, or maybe a combination of all three, or any one of those, or any combination of them. So I think, to me, that the fact that they're the only team in the National League Central with a negative run differential that speaks volumes to me. Uh, let's move to automatic buyers. 
Milwaukee, they're 34 and 26 on top of the division by a game. Yeah. Yeah. Potential needs for Milwaukee. Um, I think you're good on offense. Your bullpen is pretty rock solid. If you wanted to, you can go out and get a bullpen arm for some depth. But I think you're okay. You know, you're leading the NL Central. So there's that. Um, I would say a starting pitcher, though. You know, I think starting pitching depth can be invaluable. If need be, you can pull... Um, a Chris Sale in the postseason sometime where he comes in in game four of the World Series or whatever it was to close the World Series out and he pitches the last five innings of the game. That's entirely possible in today's game. Uh, another automatic buyer, the Chicago Cubs because they are the Chicago Cubs since 2016 and they're really good. Um... For the Cubs' needs, I would say bullpen. Just, you know, as insurance. Um, as far as I know, they don't have Brandon Morrow back yet. That could be problematic in the future if they don't have a you know true designated closer who has that kind of mentality. Uh... Really, I think that's it for the Cubs. If they really wanted to, they could add a bat, an impact batter, position player. Uh, but they really don't have a huge need to fill. So that, I mean, that's why I say maybe a batter, because, you know, all their starters are good. Their backups play pretty well. And their starting pitching is good already. You got John Lester, you got Kyle Hendricks throwing shutouts multiple times. I mean, and being consistent all the rest of the times. Plus, the rest of your rotation is getting the job done. Okay, on second thought, you know what? Go ahead and get a starting pitcher. You Darvish is not back completely yet. Jose Quintana is. Pretty good, but he scares you at times. So, yeah, just go ahead and get that guy, that starting pitcher. Um, and finally, my toss-up team, the St. Louis Cardinals. They've just won four in a row. They're three games back. They sit at 30 and 28. I got to believe they're going to be buyers. I mean... With Paul Goldschmidt, Matt Carpenter, I think Matt Carpenter will heat up. I think he's starting to already, um, but he'll. I think he'll continue to heat up. He'll continue to, you know, get better in terms of hitting as the year goes along. Uh, Marcelo Zuna is having a pretty awesome year, an also underrated year. Um, I don't think a lot of people know that he's, I believe, top top five in RBIs. And it's June. So, watch out. I don't think he'll win MVP, but, you know, 50, over 50 RBIs in June is, you know, that's pretty good. Um... I th I, I'm going to put them as buyers. I think they're clawing their way back. It's a tight division, you know, tighter than any other division, certainly in the American League, um, but also in the National League. The East is not as competitive as the Central. The West is not as competitive as the Central. So I think they're going to be buyers. I think, you know, they have incentive now to stick around, to hang tough. Uh, so needs for the Cardinals, 
starting pitching. No starter has been fantastic for the Cardinals this year. I think... I think Michaelis and Jack Flaherty have been the two most consistent slash best pitchers for the Cardinals this year. But it's still not great. So starting pitching and also bullpen. I saw Jordan Hicks, I think last week, Sunday Night Baseball against the, uh, against the Atlanta Braves. Blow a three-run lead in the bottom of the ninth. Might have been two. Might have been two. But he blew the save, and he blew the game. They ended up losing that game 4-3 in extras at Bush Stadium in St. Louis, no less. So they're going to need to fix that. Um, not really sure which one I would say go after first. But go after both of them for sure. Um, and I think you're good on offense. And position players. So, yeah. That wraps up the Central. Now, on to the National League West, where my Los Angeles Dodgers are in. Let's go with automatic sellers first. Uh, San Francisco, because they look too much like San Francisco of last year. I see promise. But not, not this year, not this year. Uh, also, Arizona, I'm gonna say, are are sellers. Um, listen, they're thirty and thirty-one, which would be good if they were in the Central or even the East. But they're in the West, and the Dodgers are at 42 and 19. Um, that's 30 and 31 is not going to cut it, to say the least. They're 12 games back. I don't. I just don't see them. They've got the second best run differential at plus 46. But when they got rid of Paul Goldschmidt and they let Patrick Corbin walk, they were trying to pull a money ball thing. And I don't think Zach Grinke and Cattell Marte and Archie Bradley can lead that team to where they want to be, quite honestly. So those are my two automatic sellers. Automatic buyers, there's only one. You guessed it, my Los Angeles Dodgers. They are looking like a complete package. Their starting pitching is amazing. Hinjin Ryu is their bona fide ace now. Clayton Kershaw is returning to pretty stellar form. Um, he just pitched seven innings the other night, struck out six or seven batters, gave up only one run against the Phillies. I mean, he was lights out, solid. Walker Bueller is also... Really good. I didn't realize this, but he's now 8-1. and one. So, he, they're pretty solid. Their bullpen is awesome. You know, every once in a while there's, they'll scare you, yes. But, for the most part, possibly best bullpen in the league. Uh... And their offense is good, too. Cody Bellinger has not stopped hitting. He's at like a 375 clip for batting average. Still leads the league and runs batted in. He's second in home runs, I think, with 20. Justin Turner, whenever he comes back, will be hot. He was hot before he went on the injured list. I think Corey Seager starting to heat up. Max Muncy is having a quietly good offensive year. He's batting right around 270, which is pretty good. Um, Jack Peterson has about 18 home runs. I mean, this is a complete lineup. Without Yasiel Puig, without Matt Kemp, who 
was pretty good for the Dodgers last year in his return to L.A. And without Yasmani Grandal, we have virtually no offensive catcher. I mean, I suppose you can count Austin Barnes and Russell Martin as offensive forces, but not really. Uh, needs, potential needs for the Dodgers. A second baseman? I mean, I, I don't know. You don't, I don't think you need a position player or an impact bat. I don't think you need starting pitching because if something happens, you've got Julio Urias in the bullpen, who was a starting pitcher. Now he's in the bullpen and started a bit this year, so he's got that under his belt. Um, plus Ross Stripling, who can double as a starter or a reliever. He's a reliever right now, but he started earlier this year too. So I'd say bullpen. That's it, man. Go go for the bullpen. That's been the Dodgers' M.O. for a while now. Toss-up teams, San Diego and Colorado. For San Diego, I'm going to say... I'm going to say they get hot. They get hot a little bit. Chris Paddock has pitched really well. They've got some young pitching that has done a really great job even though they're 31 and 29 I don't fault that on the pitching so much so I think they're going to be buyers I think that offense is going to heat up Machado is going to get hot really hot Will Myers is going to get hot and I think they're going to make some noise not for the division but they'll stay competitive enough to be buyers at the trade deadline and Colorado They've won eight in a row. Of course, I'm going to say they're buyers. They're 31 and 27, nine and a half back of the division. I don't think they catch the Dodgers. Um, just a little tease of Saturday. But I see them staying in the race for a wild card spot and staying competitive. Needs for those two teams. For the Rockies, I'd say starting pitching and maybe a bullpen guy. Kyle Freeland just got sent down to Triple A. He was supposed to be the ace this year. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when your ace gets sent down to Triple A because he's not doing so hot, that's bad. Especially when you play half of your games in a place like Colorado where all you have to do is touch the ball with the bat and it goes to the warning track. That's not good. So another starting pitcher, maybe some depth for the bullpen too. And for San Diego, an impact bat and a bullpen guy. This offense is not inspiring to watch right now. Um, trust me, I'm a Dodgers fan. I watch highlights of them 19 times a year. The offense is not inspiring to watch. Um, and the bullpen, simply for depth. Plus, I don't know how solid San Diego's bullpen is anyway. So, perfect excuse for me to say, go get a bullpen guy. Um, I believe that wraps up the National League. It does. All right. Well... That is it for Buy or Sell. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. I would very much appreciate it. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe down below. Make sure to turn on the notifications so that you will get notified every single time that I upload a video. Like I said, Saturday will likely be the next video. That will be mid-season predictions and whatnot. Until then, oh, comment too. Whether you agree, disagree, want me to talk about other stuff, hit me up down low, comment section. Until then, you guys are amazing. Thank you for watching, and stay clutch, people.